Hey guys, Magnetico here and welcome to 2023. Happy New Year. And just like last year, the first video I'm going to make is the best streaming settings for OBS. Uh, there's been a lot of updates to OBS right now. Of the, as of this current video, the newest version is 28.1.2. And there's a lot of changes that have happened between uh, the beginning of 2022 and then the beginning of 2023. Some things have changed. Uh, they, some of the things stayed the same, but they just kind of tweaked the names of it. it. It's really odd how they do certain things, but I'm here to help you out to come up with the best possible settings for your OBS stream. And you guys know that my streams look good. So we're not gonna mess around too much in the intro so we can just go ahead and hop right into it. But before I get started, if you guys uh, haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you're notified every time I post one of these videos because I am definitely gonna do a recording settings. And also I'm gonna hit up the audio tutorials as well. So you guys gonna have the best audio and the best balance between your voice and the game and all kinds of fun stuff I'm thinking about doing. So if that's your kind of thing, Hit the subscribe button. Let's get started. So here we are at the desktop right now. And as you can see, you have OBS already installed. And if OBS prompted you to go ahead and do the recommended settings, make sure you go ahead and hit yes. And that way you kind of have a base for where to start and kind of how to tweak from there. So what I would do next here is uh, actually, you know what? Uh, I'm not gonna maximize this because it gonna, it's gonna give us inception. So let's go ahead and keep it like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to file settings. This is where we're gonna start. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of stretch this out so you guys can see a little bit better. All right, so as far as like the settings go, we're gonna start on video. And the first place we're going to start is the base canvas and the base canvas has to be or should be, I should say, what your monitor resolution is. You can type it in manually, I think, for one of the two. I think it's the output resolution, but make sure if you have like a 1920 by 1080p monitor, you choose that as your base canvas. If you guys are doing 1440, make sure you choose that, so on and so forth. So since I'm running a, a 4K monitor, I'm going to leave my base canvas to that. And then my output resolution is also going to be the same. So make sure you do that. We are going to mess with the settings or a setting in the streaming settings that will kind of uh, change that. So that way we are outputting exactly what we need out to the, the audience. So uh, downscaler, you used to be able to change that once you moved these around. Uh, since both resolutions are both the same now, it doesn't even let you touch it. And again, choose your best uh, frames per second. Uh, typically you want to go for 60, but if you're, you know, you're not running the best computer or like the, the best setup, 30 might be a good option for you guys as well. So we're going to go to output and the first tab here should be streaming and we're going to go ahead and uh, hit advanced. I think it starts at basic uh, or beginner. I don't know how they named it. Uh, make sure you hit advanced. Once you hit advanced, it should give you this like entire, uh, the entire thing, uh, all the good stuff, right? So audio track, I'm going to leave it at one. Twitch VOD track, I don't really mess with that, so I'm not going to check it. Uh, encoder, this could be X264 uh, if you're using your CPU or like a Ryzen CPU, or if you're using an NVIDIA NVEC uh, or like a G, uh, RTX or GTX uh, NVIDIA card, uh, make sure you use NVIDIA NVEC because it is, in my opinion, uh, the best when it comes to uh, rendering or streaming, or even when it comes to recording videos. It's just like they just improved it so much and it it hits your system so little now that there's almost barely any impact or loss of frames when you're playing a PC game and trying to stream at the same time using the, the NVIDIA NVENC. So on this next one here, the rescale resolution, uh, this is where uh, I told you guys earlier on the other tab, the video tab, that we're gonna go ahead and change it. Uh, we all know that Twitch and I think Facebook only do 1080p. So make sure you change the rescale resolution to, to that. This is what the audience is gonna see. You can play your games at 4K or have a big monitor and display it you know, perfectly on your end, but the audience is gonna see 1080p. I know that YouTube does support 4K. I have tried to stream in that before. It was a horrible experience. Uh, I, I didn't figure it out. It was, it, was, it was quite awful. So, but on Twitch or Facebook, 1080p, even on YouTube, 1080p uh, would be the best, uh, the best choice unless you have like a beast of a computer. Uh, rate control. I usually go for CBR. Uh, a lot of people like variable bait, uh, bit rates. I like constant bit rate. Uh, and we're going to choose our bit rate to 6,000. And that is if you have like great internet. Uh, there is actually like an official like Twitch page. I'm going to see if I'm going to pull that up real quick. 
So this is the official Twitch page, and it kind of tells you what you should use when it comes to uh, the X264, which is the uh, using your CPU or the NVIDIA if you want to use your NVIDIA graphics card. Now, uh, again, when you started OBS for the first time, it did recommend its settings. Whatever that bit rate it's set to uh, should be maybe what you should use. I know it's not 6,000 a lot of the times. So maybe you don't have uh, the fastest internet. That's totally okay. But... If it recommended 4,500 instead at 30 frames per second, I would maybe consider using that as well because you guys got to listen to me on this one. You have to be completely honest with, with yourself and more importantly, you have to be completely honest with your audience. If you don't pick the right one, if you pick something that's, that's too high, uh, you are going to be streaming a slideshow and people will leave immediately because people, uh, for some reason, there's two things people can't stand when it comes to streaming, a stuttery video and awful audio they will leave immediately and never come back okay so be honest with with yourself be honest with your audience uh if you're having encoder issues like obs will tell you encoder issues or um encoder overload is the word you're looking for uh you're gonna have to turn some settings down you can either turn it down from 60 frames per second to to 30 you can uh even stream at 720p which is 100 percent acceptable or you might have to turn down um, some of your bit right here. So again, run a speed test. Uh, Ookla has really good ones or, you know, just run a speed test, whatever it is. And in this case, this is mine right here. Obviously I will not have any issues, but again, be completely honest when it comes to, uh, your stream and your viewers. So use this page as, as, as a reference, as a really good reference. Also use the recommended settings that, uh, OBS picked out for you in the beginning as a good reference as well. So, um, next up here is going to be the keyframe resolution or the keyframe interval. I'm sorry, two, always just pick two seconds. Uh, the preset here is going to be, uh, P six. This is one of the new options that they added on here. Uh, I don't do P seven because I was having a little bit of issues. And again, speaking of the whole honesty thing, uh, the best results that I've had were P six. If you're still having, still having issues, you might have to go down the line and maybe try medium or slow, uh, P five, P four, go down the line until you find uh, the, that sweet spot for you. But P6 is where I'm at. Uh, tuning, uh, I usually do high quality. That creates a really good looking video. Uh, you can go for low latency if you wanna like almost immediately speak to your, your chat, uh, but you suffer in video quality. It's gonna be very blurry, uh, very pixelated. So I typically go for the better quality and then just get the chat whenever I can. Uh, Multipass. Another new option that they added here, and I usually go for single pass. You can do two passes on quarter resolution. That one seems to do okay. Uh, you don't want to do two passes on full resolution because it's doing full resolution twice and it just hits your frames. Like it, it, it really, really uh, hits your, your graphics card. So I usually stick with just single pass and I've been okay with that. And uh, profile has always been a high. Look ahead, I always leave off. Uh, cycle visual tuning, I turn that on, GPU zero, and then the max B frames, make sure that is set to two. Um, I have fixed and helped a lot of people out with stuttering issues and all kinds of problem that, problems they were having just by fixing that too. Like it's, it's crazy. So two is what you want. The last setting uh, we're going to go with is we're going to go to advanced. Make sure your video is set up to render um, or direct 3D 11. Color format should be NB12. That is for HD content. Uh, color space should be 709. Also, again, for HD content. And your color range should be limited. If you do full, it, it'll be okay. But if you're playing a, like a dark game like Bioshock or uh, Resident Evil Village, it will crush all the blacks, okay? So my recommendation on this is to leave that at limited and and I'll teach you guys and I'll show you guys something real quick here, uh, bonus, let's call it that. Let's go back to my camera here. If you go to the uh, the source, in this case it can be your Elgato capture card for your game, in this case it's gonna be the capture card for the camera. If you go to properties, you can actually change the, the limited here as well. So if your game is like too washed out and you can see like, like it looks like it's really, really like, I like this hazy almost. Uh, I'll, I'll show you actually what it looks like right here. Color range, cool. There we go. If this is what your game looks like and you're like, man, that doesn't look good at all. You can always change it here on the game itself or your camera and just go to limited and it should darken it up a little bit. Don't touch the one in the other settings. Always mess with the source itself. 
um, instead of uh, messing with all the sources at once. So that way you can, you have maximum control. In this case, the camera likes it at limited. That was the default, but let's say it's too dark and everything's super crushed without you touching anything, you can just go to the color range, change it to full, and it should whiten out a lot of those areas. It's just kind of messing with the gamma, nothing crazy. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. So let's go ahead and put this back to default here. And there you go. So I made this video short and to the point so you guys can get started with 23.3 with the best OBS settings. I did this last year again, and I really, really enjoyed making that video. So if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, or if you guys are having issues, make sure you post that in the comments below. So that way I can help you, or maybe somebody else might have a solution for you. The next video I'll be making is the best recording settings. And after that, some audio settings as well. So if this is your kind of thing, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That way you're notified every time I post one of these videos. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Happy New Year, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.